Hello, and welcome to Safe Space, episode two. Woo! Hello. Yes, we're still Woo. doing this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're back. Yes, this is a live tabletop role-playing show where uh, a group of people who love to play games just sit around and we're going to play the Mothership RPG system um, from the awesome Tuesday Night Games. Uh, my name is Vince Hunt and I will be your GM slash warden for the evening. Which is like a dungeon master, game master kind of thing, but warden just sounds really cool. It's a really cool word. Anyway, <laughs> don't look at, don't look like that, Gav. Sorry, <laughs> I'll take whatever I get. <laughs> um, and I am very pleased to be joined by four amazing players um, who are ready to roll some dice, tell a story of survival horror, and who knows, maybe they will uh, lose their minds during tonight's game. We will see. Um, but let's start from the top. Jim, would you like to introduce yourself to our lovely people? Hello, I'm Jim, and I'll be playing Zam Brazel. And I'm Lizzie. I can't remember who I'm supposed to be. If I'm me, <laughs> if I'm introducing myself. It's already started. What? You're already in the character. I'm like, hi, I'm Wendy. <laughs> I'm Wendy. <Yeah>. Fly me. <laughs> Hello, I'm Gavin, and I will be playing Dick Sloan. Hi, I'm PJ, and I am playing Dr. Bill Forrest. Yes, and he is a medical professional, but PJ is an absolute legend because he's feeling a bit unwell this evening. So um, wow. I'm going to put yeah. him out of his misery within the first five <laughs> minutes. No, yeah. um, <laughs> the, leave the COVID early. got me, and now I can't really talk, and my brain isn't working, so this is going to be great. Um, I, I mean... I think a, a lot of us have had it in some way, shape or form, but I, I can't remember. Does it make you very susceptible to uh, descriptions of horror and terror, PJ? Do you know? It makes me a description of horror and terror. <laughs> <laughs> Class. Um, no, you are lovely, PJ, but this game may contain some, well, it's survival horror. Um, anyone who watched last week's episode will know it's, all, it's got laughs in it as well, but there may be depictions of body horror and sort of uh, sanity and, and mental uh, faculties and things like that that some people may find may be uncomfortable with. For, for instance, there may be depictions of violence and gore when it comes to the horror. If you don't like some of the icky stuff, we totally understand. Thank you for watching. If you got this far, thank you very much. Um, but we totally understand if you pull the ripcord and don't want to watch further because uh, last week was meeting the crew and now... I can start terrorising them. <laughs> I was eating the crew. Yes. <laughs> in, a, in a range of wonderful and horrible ways. No, um, no, we are going to be telling a, a story of horror and sci-fi. So, you know, fair warning to anyone out there. Um, all my players, uh, I've talked to all, all my players and they can get in contact with me. If, if anything goes too far, if we pull it back a little bit on certain things, um... We will. So if anything changes last minute for, for some reason, you know you, you know that's why. Um, but I think we're all ready to just put the pedal to the floor and see where this crazy game goes. Um, I just want to say, first off, um, for anyone who doesn't know what the game is, this is, and I've, I've, I will get this used to this by the end of this season, this is Mothership from the wonderful Tuesday Night Games. Um, yes, um, there is a free version of uh, Zero Edition available if you go to mothershiprpg.com you can download it there. There was a wildly successful Kickstarter which I cannot wait to receive. Um, lovely box and everything that comes with a DM screen. I actually made my own DM screen. It looks like something out of the, the serial killer made out of the film Seven. So I won't show it on sc screen. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> no, no, seriously. It's seriously, screen, it's, 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 it's like gorilla tape. It looks like... Oh my. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's got all the... Yeah. Got no sparkles on it. Okay. Well, not not stickers. Not yet, not yet. But I did listen to a lot of Nine Inch Nails when I was making it. No, no. no. <laughs> um, no, but Tuesday Night Games are awesome. Like, go and follow them and support them. It's really cool. Um, but this, we're going to be playing the, the first edition of the game. They've refined some things. The character sheet itself is immensely fun. Just if you just wanted to have a character creation night, as I did with all of these lovely players, that was a hell of a fun night just by itself, wasn't it? Just rolling up characters and these wonderful characters that you're going to see, get to know, and maybe some backups. Who knows? Maybe I told my players to create backups just in case. 
But if anyone dies just all of a sudden, it's easy enough to create and create new characters on the go anyway. So it's it's a brilliant system. Been looking forward to running it for quite some time. Um, so I think obviously when we first did this session, it was going to be streamed. It was going to be all these kind of things, and the technical world melted my brain. Uh, um, so God bless my players for. Um, going ahead and, and playing the first session and stuff and now we're switching up how we're presenting this show so whether you watch us on the YouTube premiere or you're catching up on the VOD thank you, thank you, thank you very much we hope you enjoy the next couple of hours it's going to be fun and unpredictable um, I know I will probably struggle to laugh uh, not to laugh at, at certain times where these players play um, but of course we'll give you all the, the shouts and stuff at the end because right now I think it's time to find out what's happen to our lovely crew so without further ado um, my players are all ready to go aren't you? yes <laughs> <laughs> without further ado it is time to boot up the hyperdrive start the engines and start episode 2 of Safe Space <laughs> Last time, we met the crew of the Susan O'Brien, a ragtag and unique crew of blue-collar workers on the edge of space. After a long 18-month stint of dismantling, recycling and salvage, the crew are preparing for the journey home when they get a call from HQ that another job needs doing, and as they're the closest ship, they drew the short straw. An executive class cruise liner is having communication problems during its first time out of the docks, and the O'Brien has been given the job of fixing it. On top of all that, there is a discontinued satellite relay station that is prime for extra scrap and salvage, and after a less than fortunate time out in space, it could just be what the crew need to get fully paid. So they prepared for an extra month in space, month or so. But these things took a turn when en route to the relay, the ship was almost hit by an unidentified chunk of space debris. There were some premature emergency manoeuvres that may have been a little overzealous, and a couple of the crew almost took a tumble through the corridors if it were not for quick thinking and some impressive upper body strength. They avoided disaster, but not unscathed, as Zam Brazel confirmed when he began repairs to the outside of the ship. An integral part of the ship's hyperdrive had been badly damaged, and without a replacement, so were the ship's chances of ever getting home. And that is where we pick up our session this week. <sighs> so, we open, we don't cut to, Zam is not on the outside of the ship, we open in the large cargo bay of the Susan O'Brien, um, which I kind of want to call it the Susan O'Brien every time I want to use her full name, <laughs> but I think they only would just, polite. yes, it's only polite, God rest her soul, um, but on the floor, in the cargo bay, on the floor of the cargo bay, is some of what was left of the hyperdrive coils, um, which Zam brought in from the outside of the vessel. It's pretty much scrap now. Um, the crew um, stand in the bay, and unless any of you wish to be somewhere else in the ship, um, but I mean, Zam is there, the captain is there. Are the rest of you all around, or where are you at this point in time after Zam comes in? No, I'm there. I'm there in case Sam's done himself a mischief. Yeah. I'll be there for maintenance reasons. Purposes. <laughs> Something might need maintaining. 
Um, so the, so what, the entire what? It's maintenance. What? Yeah, it's yeah. Shut up. You can't uh, do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the warden will remember this. No, the uh, the crew stand in the bay, looking down at the sort of the mess that Zan brought in, and for a long moment there's silence as everyone sort of takes in this scene. And uh, the captain, after a while, the captain just looks down and is like, Well, I guess it's official. We're in a pretty bad spot. Are you okay, Zam? Yeah, I'm fine. Better than these coils. How are we looking out there? Is there anything else apart from the coils, or is this the worst of it? Yeah, this is the worst of it. There's some minor damage, but uh, I, I patched that up. Well, um, I run some diagnostics with Darcy, and it seems like life support and everything that might have got us killed were are working fine. So, uh, well done on your quick thinking, Dick. Any time, Captain. Mm. Um, it, we could have been a lot worse if it wasn't for your quick thinking. So, um, so without this. We're going to have a hard time, nigh on impossible time, getting home. But the good doctor here suggested that maybe um, this Echelon vessel we're headed up to help out at some point may have the parts we need. Um, it's a big chunk of metal, so I'm hoping it it may have. But, Doc, I know you don't like to go out and about, but um, I'm afraid it might be a case about minding our P's and Q's and playing nice, so... I think you might have to take the lead when we get to uh, this um, Icarus, I believe the, the vessel is called. Um, I believe you ran in those circles, am I right, Doc? I would never say I was one for playing nice, but I've got some experience. Well, experience is all I need right now. Experience is what's going to get us out of this jam now. Right now, obviously, Zam, if you make sure everything's working, Wendy, you continue, make sure that everything on the inside is working ship shape. We got a job to do, and uh, I don't, we shouldn't lose our heads about this, because that's the worst thing that could possibly happen. So let's just focus on the task at hand. I've seen people lose it over the littlest thing. But right now, let's focus on the job. Get this satellite relay scrapped up, chopped up, and put in cargo, and then move on to this vessel and see if we can see if that works. How's that sound? Captain, what was the satellite's designation again? Uh, I believe... Uh, Darcy, what was the name of that satellite relay? And the... Uh, monitor that's on a rail in the cargo bay. There's several small monitors in the cargo bay which is quite useful. The satellite relay is named Echo 237, Captain. Ah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Echo 237, why? Is that important for any reason, Doc? Well, could be the whiskey haze, but uh, I'm pretty sure one of the pieces of metal that hit us had... 237 on it. What? That that can't be right. We are a good few date. Are you absolutely sure, Doc? Never. Always <laughs> reassuring from a medical professional. <laughs> well, what? Hmm. Well, I value your opinion, Doc, but if you're not utterly convinced I think we just we just stay on track get to this thing and what do you that doesn't make any sense if we could at least stay cautious I think that uh, that's wise words doc um, how's everyone doing Zam, Zam I know you're doing okay but it's, it was quite a bump we took out there. Is everyone doing okay? Wendy, honey, how you doing? I'm good. Dick? Yeah. Well, tip-top, Captain. 
Are you drumming to drive the ship? Uh, no, uh, I'll take stick for uh, for the next uh, the next round. Um, yeah, that's a that's a good idea, Captain. <laughs> I love that this is already building up. <laughs> <laughs> mm. um, Choose okay. to ignore it. Yeah, <laughs> or just blissfully ignorant of everything around it. <laughs> <laughs> okay then. So um yeah, let's do what we gotta do. Let's take it as it may. Um so let's get back to work. And you all get back to your roles. I mean I'm not sure what what you would immediately start doing. Obviously there is there is maintenance to make sure after a bump like that there is probably a good day of making sure that the ship is actually okay. Wendy uh, welding montage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With some yeah. How much kind of the satellite do we have on board now? You don't have any of the satellite. We what, don't. what you have is what's left of the hyperdrive sort of okay. coils. And Zam, you would know that the they weren't just sort of loose and hanging from the bottom of the ship. Yeah. It took off a casing mm. and sort of completely sort of destroyed it. So the whole you know the that's something that you would need to yeah. probably if you don't have a new casing if you can't get hold of a new one at some point that is something you may have to manufacture there's a lot of scrap and there's a lot of yeah. salvage you I may... figure yeah <clears throat> he's yeah. going to start jury rigging something out of the, yeah. uh, the scrap oh well if that's the case we... let's have our first roll of the evening <laughs> okay would you... my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> um, would you like to give me I would say Give me an intellect roll, but yeah. um, what is plus that? ten is... for my jury rigging? Yeah, isn't it? yeah. Is oh, that... and plus fifteen for my mechanical repair. Yeah, you can. Yeah, mechanical repair as well. You can add those two. The way that yeah. um, for those watching the the way you play Mothership, everyone has stats and scores. You roll a d. It's a d100 system. You roll that, and you're aiming to get underneath your score. But everyone has their own individual skills that can add ten, fifteen, five to a score. Um, and the way I play it. Because um, this is a homebrew world, and I'm sort of we're we're all learning as we're going and having fun doing it. Is that I'm allowing certain things to stack if it makes sense. So Zam, obviously, he's got skills in fixing stuff, being the ship's mechanic, so he can add a couple of skills to make it a bit easier for him to succeed. Yeah. So that would take my forty-five up to seventy. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Rolled seventy-one. <laughs> Okay. May. <laughs> um, so, I can't that's we it. die. That, take a point of stress. Yep. For the fail. Um, and there is a stress system, so anytime there's a, there's a failure, characters will take stress, and that works into a panic system later on. Um, so, so, I'm and, up to five now. As you're working hard on this, you're, you're just. It's not like it's completely failing. You've got the skills to do this, Zam, yeah. but right now. It's just not working. You're not finding the right bits. You're tired. You're, yeah. you know, you're getting more and more wound up. You're hurt say, a more, little bit. More, grum more grumpy than usual. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's just nothing. It's all crap. Surrounded by junk. <laughs> Can we get anything good? <laughs> and the the hand welders going on and off all the time. Yeah. It's and probably when do you do like if you're around in the lower part of the the ship in the um the cargo bay etc you can hear zam effing and jeffing the whole time smacking things with a mallet and, and you can tell he's not having a good time of it <laughs> um but can, yes can i can can wendy um perhaps just find her way nearby doing her bit of maintenance and repair internals and just try and do some epic welding just <laughs> You know. Yes, we'll say um, the light wall welding. Just yes, like. with the with the shaking and the way everything moved. This isn't like a sleek like starship. This is this is an oil rig and you know kind of that kind of you know. So with the bump, there are some panels that have come off that need fixing, you know, for, for security reasons or just yeah. So, Wendy, do you want to do this near Zam? Yes. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I believe there was a hand gesture involved as well. This is purposeful welding. Okay. Okay. Purposeful, purposeful welding with an intellect um, role. But what would you like to add? Have you got anything that you can I add to it? Nothing. 
um, no. <laughs> You're not going to let me use my military training? No, not for this one. Or my athletics? No, I don't think they'll count for if this. I did a forward roll into the weld. Um, no. <laughs> no, but... Um, All right. There is something. Um, each character has their own... It won't really... No. Um, what does Wendy have? Each character has um, a sort of trauma response as well. I don't know if it's something that will actually work in Wen Ooh. Wendy's one. Um, I know what I've got assigned to. Oh, why can't I find Wendy's sheet? No, yeah, because mine is once per session I can take an advantage on panic checks. Oh, yes, yes. Mine yes. is about what happens when I panic. Yes, yes, yeah. okay. So just, um, just bear those things in mind for when things get really bad and <laughs> how that might affect everyone else. But yes, roll away, Wendy. Roll away. What are you aiming to get? I'm aiming to get 27 and I rolled 52. <laughs> uh, take a point of stress. <clears throat> As, like, you're trying to weld and another panel just just falls out and it's just not it's just not going right. And oh well. <laughs> you need a hand there, Wendy? Do you? No, I'm good. Me too. Okay. <laughs> the tension. <laughs> um, while thought, this is going I, on, carry on, Jim. I was going to say, I thought we were connecting and, you know, <laughs> oh, yeah. after that. Yeah, bond, bonding through <laughs> failure. Yeah, yeah. Such is life. Um, but where are the rest of the crew? Where? What's Dick doing at this moment in time? Um, I'm around in the cargo bay trying to tidy up after Zam because he's made an absolute pigsty of the place after I tidied it up <laughs> and took inventory. Yeah. I'm just going about tutting. Yeah. Oh, this wasn't you. <laughs> so trying to try, trying to put everything back. As he's clearing up the oil and then there's more oil and there's more things yeah. going wrong. And yeah. You don't have to roll... The janitor check. Yeah, don't, <laughs> yeah. don't worry. <laughs> because you're good at your job. You've been doing this long enough. Yeah. Um, for the term custodian, but. Oh, sorry, <laughs> custodian. I'll change that on the Gibbous Incorporated ID cards. <laughs> <laughs> which, 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 a, which actually exists. Stick around till the break. Anyway, uh, and while um, Dick is doing this, what about the doc? In sick bay, just um, basically making sure nothing's been damaged in, in in the impact that everything's where it should be and supplies are all checking over it all the way. Cool. Making sure that um, the ship's cat, Admiral Mittens, is who was quite stressed after the initial bump. Oh, did he fail his check? <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't taken a point of stress, but you may <laughs> if anything happens to him, her. What is Admiral Mittens? Oh, it's actually a her, yeah, sorry, yeah. she. She, yeah, so, yeah. So you can spend a bit of time with Admiral Mittens, making sure everything's there. And... He doesn't give a shit. <laughs> Sounds about right. Um, and things after the initial excitement, things begin to settle down for the day. And uh, it takes probably, a, it's about another day and a half before the captain calls the rest of you, Dick, you would be sitting in the in the bridge with the captain when when you see this. Um, but she calls the rest of the crew to the bridge. Um, and when you all get there, she looks at you all and is like, "Well, we have we had to take a little bit of a, a detour, um, just a just a few clicks, but." It seems um, this satellite relay was not as far as we thought it was going to be. Um, although, however, I think you may have been correct, Doctor. If you um, if you look out the window, you'll see what I mean. And when you look out the window, <laughs> yeah, you can see this satellite relay, which is a large large vessel and you're used to it's, it's not like you're you haven't seen like images or you know been aware of what these things are like there's several tiers 
the top of it is there, there is like a it's, it's almost a, a cylindrical sort of like shape there's like there's there's two decks and then on the top there is lots of like antenna and dishes and panels and all kinds just high power transmitters and on either side um, there are sort of huge sort of metallic shiny sort of panels you can see the um, logo of the orbit all communications um, on the side quite clearly on the side of this um, vessel um, but as you from your current viewpoint it's tilted and th this is because the relay which should have been for want of a better term stationary a station which can be in space I'm not getting too sciencey about this um, it's slowly rotating as if in slow motion now on one side of the structure is a large flat panel like I said one of one of the panels made up of hundreds of smaller metallic panels like little hexagons like almost like you know the James Webb yeah. um, camera and stuff you know um, very expensive hardware this is the these are the sort of panels that when the crew were given this job were told this stuff's worth a lot of money so if we bring that back we'll be quids in and everything will be fine you've seen like I say you've seen things like this before um, whether it's just circumstantial knowledge or sort of the base awareness so and this relay should have two of them it does not because the opposite side of the structure has been completely torn away as it turns you see tiny bits of metallic debris sort of floating around the structure um, no doubt emanating from the enormous gaping hole in its side we can actually see into the structure itself and like like the corridors that sort of wrap around and sort of disappear and you can see even here there, there may be the faint sign of some lighting of some kind um, and it is just slowly sort of sort of turning um, on as the structure is it has like the central column and on either sides there are two airlock sort of bays only one of them is currently there because the other one is gone and you see on as it turns around on the other sort of airlock bay it says echo 237 and doc this very much now that you see it in focus this is very reminiscent of something you saw past the ship after it collided with it now the captain sort of taps into the computer she speaks to Darcy and she brings up a blueprint of the structure. As you, as the, the the ship was sent blueprints and information about the the jobs that they're about to do. And if you're breaking down this sort of equipment, that sort of thing's quite handy, to, so you know where to take it and stuff. You see on these blueprints, you see an entire blue, blueprint. But on the outside, it looks very different. Now, my players are currently in roll 20, and I'm going to show them a map of what's currently there. Blueprint, blueprint. <laughs> now, for you lovely people at home, just for a bit of reference, and I hope this works. <laughs> um, Chair screen. <laughs> this this <laughs> is... Not that this is what they can see from the two maps you can see there's the main control deck and you can see that the there's the left hand side of the st structure on the blueprints you see there is a mirroring part that should be on the on the map it's the right hand side um the other uh bit of map on the right on that you see on the far right hand side i'm trying to describe describe this and murdering it apologies that is the lower space that sits underneath this is the living quarters um, this used to be a manned vessel, so the the main section was used for all of the work, and then the the two man team used to live in this small little cubicle underneath and try and survive <laughs> in there. Um, so, and for the for the player's reference, on the blueprint you see would essentially be um, the bit that is currently cut out of this map kind of looks 
like the bit on the left only flipped <laughs> just for ease um, yeah so that that's your reference players um, for the structure itself and hopefully that came out alright so <laughs> as the, the captain as you all taking on this and the, the, the captain is the ship isn't stationary, your ship isn't stationary, but she's just sort of keeping it within a decent distance. She, she's not she's not getting too close right now. Like I say, there's little bits of metallic de debris uh, floating around. Um, as you'll look upon this. Now, what the hell do you think could have done something like this? Do you think it could have been like a meteor or... Does it look like um, kind of a clean cut across the bit that's that's gone? It looks like a hell of a mess, and it looks like it's it's oh, torn. Yeah. Evidence of fire. It's there are not from where you can see. You would have to get a closer view, um, but certainly right now it just looks like almost as if like if you had a if you had a toy if you had a model of this and just ripped off part of it. That's what's happened. Um, it doesn't look like... He would be very sad. <laughs> um, as the captain's... Going, God damn it. It would have been nice if we could have had both of those. It looks like... Looks like something... Like a meteor or something has done half of our work for us. Well, there, sh there should be still plenty that we can... Junk and trunk, at the very least, but... As we always, as, as you've always said, half a part, half a ton of junk is better than no junk at all. <laughs> You're absolutely right, Wendy. Um, that's the spirit. Although, um, judging from the look of this, we're going to be have to be pretty careful if we um, going about this. Now, I know there's there's a few sections of this thing, and uh, of course, salvage rights, whatever we get, I don't know. I mean, this this thing has been derelict for years, so there, there's not been no one in this thing for quite some time. But whatever you, whatever we find is ours, so it might be. Zam, honey, I know you like to um, cut things up. Yeah. How do you want to go about this? Now, I mean, as it stands, it might be a little easier to cut and pack as is. Half our job has been done, but... What do you think? Well, I figure we go for those power cells. We could uh, maybe patch up some of our damage with that. That's a good. Well, if they have left some power cells, that would that would be quite handy, indeed. Maybe there's something we could use to uh, jerig some coils. That's true. How you, how you getting on with that um, casing? Yeah, yeah, it's not going well. Mm. You've made a right mess down there. A dick, honey, not now. No, not now honey. Well, you don't have to tidy it up. <laughs> I mean, at some point, we're going to have to take slices off this thing. Zam, when we get to that, do you want to do it with the ship's cutter or do you need to be on site with it with the smaller one i think we uh go in with the smaller cutter be a bit more precise with this one okay well yeah we need to we need to go in and make sure that all the power is off and there's nothing that might if zam's right and there's a power cell in there we don't want to be cutting and strutting and cutting into one of those things because then our trip will be cut incredibly short so I say I can get her in I can get Susie in a little bit closer and then I can keep her steady it's going to be difficult because this thing is turning and there's no way that this ship can keep that thing steady so I won't be able to come with you but if you, you guys are going to have to go on and see what the damage is like inside 
I mean, we've done this sort of thing before. Um, this one's just a little bit trickier. And certainly, this sort of, like, being a, like a space junker and stuff, there are, as well as just dis dismantling stuff on planets, there are the times where you've taken apart, like, just floating bits of scrap or, you know, pods or anything that's just been floating around. So, you, so you, you know that that's part of the job and you know strangers to suiting up and actually getting the mag boots on and doing the dirty work. But this one, just because of the nature of it, might take a little more concentration. Um, and like whatever you know whatever's on there is reclaimed um, then it is yours um, but your vac suits themselves um, have sort of manned maneuverability sort of units you know the, the, the sort of a <laughs> how do I say it? the astronauts you know the little the packs they have these miniature yeah. ones that help they don't you, you're not going to fly through space like Superman but it, from short bursts it will get to you where you need to go um, but who is going to take a trip to Echo 237? Zam's going. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what? what? Yeah, I think Dick okay. will go. Dick okay. is going. Are we kind of spacewalking our way across, not parking up and um, connecting? The, the way that they, the, the captain will do, she will probably because it's moving to have a sort of a connection because it's sort of turning it may put strain on it so she has to she's going to get as close as she can so that like when you sort of spacewalk for better, once we get a term it's a, it's a short run and jump do you know what I mean you're not going you're not it's going to be safe I, I'm not going to I'm going to tell you now I'm not going to make you roll to see if you miss a jump and then float away there's going to be nothing like that <laughs> oh um, mate come on, <laughs> oh, come on. everybody wants to come see on. Zam die <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, as the captain begins like figuring out with Darcy, like the you know the maths of it, and I wouldn't know where to start with that. But she's certainly trying to figure out things. Whoever's going to head over to the satellite relay, a doc. What is the doctor doing? He doesn't want to go, um, <clears throat> but it sort of feels like he has to. So he reluctantly. If the rest of the crew's going. One of them's going to hurt themselves, you know. <laughs> and um, and so it well, they might hurt themselves depending on what they take with them, because everyone has their um, their vac suits, and uh, which so that puts the armor points up then, doesn't it? Yes, yeah. Like your vac suits have an armor point points of three. Okay, now it's up to you. We haven't locked down what these spacesuits are like. Um, they're not super bulky like NASA, but they're hardly like it's not Prometheus like wetsuits running no. along like that. This is they're slightly. Bulky. I think it's like first contact kind of thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Probably with some extra sort of bits yeah. on on top to make it a bit bulkier. Um, yeah. Dix is noticeably slimmer than everyone else's, um, as he doesn't need the oxygen unit. And things like that. He doesn't need the just for show. Yeah. <laughs> Tailoring. Yep. Um, it's like a three-piece suit. <laughs> now, now we Helmet. we learned last last session that Zam has not modified. He hasn't customized his in any way. Nope. Because there are there's quite a few vac suits as part of this ship, but um, Zam has kept his pretty much company standard. Um, what about everyone else? And I'm looking at Wendy. There you are. <laughs> Um, so Wendy has, has found um, a space sharpie um, and has drawn three hearts along the front of her suit. Nice. Nice. What does a Dix look like? Has he modified it in any way? Has he just... Uh, no. It just tries to keep it as prim and proper as possible. Hmm. Like try and keep it clean. Yeah. And, and ironed. Yeah. <laughs> just all over the electronics, just with an iron. <laughs> <laughs> Things are sparking. Um, I would imagine that the docks has not seen too much use. No. No, no. In fact, I sort of imagine he doesn't remember which one is his. 
and just always grabs a random one. So sometimes it doesn't quite fit right. Or... Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, especially a vac suit. A hazard suit is a completely different thing. That's more for on surface dealing with um, atmospheric conditions. But a vac suit is a completely different kettle of fish. And it is bulkier. And certainly, as it says in the rules, uh, the players did all get the rule book, by the way. I'm not being completely mean to them. <laughs> With a vac suit, speed checks have disadvantage. Welcome, welcome to Mothership, fine. everyone. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but another thing that the crew can do once they're getting into all of this equipment, like bulky equipment, is what are you going to take with you? Equipment wise. Uh, do I even have to uh, answer that question? You are taking your um your I'm smaller laser Benice. you're taking the smaller laser cutter known as Benice. Benice. Yeah. The on site laser cutter. Yep. Which um for anyone uh, watching or listening, this thing almost looks a little bit like a Gatling gun. <laughs> that has these power cells. It takes a little while to charge up. But it can cut through a ship. <laughs> so... Yeah, and it? I've got my um, extra battery as well. Okay. Is there... Um, just a heads up, if you've got... Um, if you've got vac suits... I'm, I'm a generous warden. I'm a nice guy. Alright, so I've got my patch kit as well. The yeah? patch kit, yes. Yep. Yeah. Patch okay. kit should... Should um, you have any damage or um, to your suit, it will take that will patch the hole and at least make it serviceable until you can get it back or get another one, etc. Depending on where you are or what happens. So it's up to you whether you will take a patch kit with you. Do you take anything yeah. else, um, Wendy? What are you going to take? Uh Wendy, Wendy obviously knows everything. Um, Lizzie doesn't, so Lizzie's currently googling. Can you weld in space? Um, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, we'll be yeah. Right. yeah, we'll be right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you're your oxy mix, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, space welder, small. The one I was using around the the ship just for maintenance. Okay. Um. And sort of maybe tucked into the pocket of my suit, assuming it has many pockets. Um. A little handmade octopus dolly doll type figure, just small, maybe a couple okay. of inches. What is it crafted out of? Toot, debris, Toot. Uh, <laughs> the um, emptied out um, packaging of dehydrated meals that Dick has rehydrated for us, and that sort of stuff, foil and. Things that won't explode. Nice, nice. So I'd imagine it's that these back suits have almost like they have like these sort of pockets or pouches of well, utility pouches that you can put like bolts or any kind of things. So you can tuck your I don't know good luck charm or totem or whatever it means to Wendy um, okay. into that pouch. Uh, what about the dock? First aid kit, trunk gun, hip flask. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I'd love to see you drink from that really with your helmet. It. Clunk, <laughs> clunk. Oh, just God damn just it. in case we find an, a, a section with breathable atmosphere. He's always prepared, BJ. Yeah. Always prepared. Fuck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you just get like a very long straw and just sort of feed it. I thought you meant like leave the bottle on the <laughs> shit to <with> the straw. <laughs> Like a cable. Fox, it's like a know. cable as he's floating out into space. Um, and like one of those Victorian um, diving suits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get the captain just yeah. like bellows. <laughs> <laughs> and Dick, what are you taking with you? Uh, foam gun for foaming, and a screwdriver, and a sample collection kit. <laughs> You never know. Very true. And um, so everyone has their inventory for their little journey. And the captain lines up the ships. Um, and sure, soon enough, there's a point where she lines it up and it 
she gets close enough that everyone can have a mini spacewalk out to the vessel. It's a, it's a using the maneuverability sort of packs. It won't be too much problems getting over there. Now, where are you planning to land on that vessel? There is no the, the living quarters. There is no no entrance to that. That's still in one piece. But you can literally just land in one of the corridors of this satellite satellite relay. Uh, <clears throat> I think Zam's going to go to the kind of outer corridor nearest the power cells at the top. Okay. So that he can just get to work with. Uh, so you 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 kind you kind of yeah. like heading to the sort of northern yeah section. Are you all going to follow Zam there? Uh, yes. Well, I am. Cool. Yeah. Um, then I will have everyone. This is just to see how, and everyone has their mag boots, of course. They're, they're attached to these. This is to see how graceful <laughs> you all are in landing there safely without any problems, as this thing is turning as well. So I will have everyone give me a now this is an interesting check <laughs> because I don't know who has zero G. Zam does. <laughs> I would say this may be a speed check. Or an intellect check. I will say the intellect might be used to pick pick a point and stick to it. This is just to see how well you land and if you Well for yeah, for Zam, speed and intellect are the same anyway. Yeah. But uh, I get plus ten with the zero the G. Zero G. If you have zero... this is with disadvantage. Yeah? This, yeah, in... yeah. So all of these will be with disadvantage. It's a, it's a it's a tricky thing to do. So what you're doing, so you'll be able to make advantage. Yeah, you'll be able to make it there. You'll all be able to make it there, but it's just how you might have a bump along the but, way. So I'm going to take it the disadvantage. You pick the highest. The one, higher right? roll, yes. Um, and just for you know clarity, a double zero, and then a three would just be three. Wouldn't that it? is three. Yeah, so that one's no good because uh, I rolled a seventy-seven. Oh, you so, rolled a you rolled a seventy-seven. Seventy-seven. Okay. Yeah. Now, once again, for the the people at home watching, there are such things in this game as a critical. Whenever you roll a double on your dice, it can either be a critical success or a critical <laughs> failure. Zam just got a critical <laughs> failure. Something might happen, but we'll get the rest of the rolls from the rest of the crew. We'll get back to Zam. Wendy, what did Wendy get? Uh, oh, Jesus. Uh, even with my added athletics. Um, yeah, I would, yes, I totally would have had, had, had that as well, yeah. Yeah. It was either a 67 or a 72, so nope. Point of stress. I bang my knee on the way. Point of stress for Wendy. What did Dick get? Um, what are all zeros? Is that just ten? All zeros is a hundred. Yeah. Oh, is it? <laughs> if it was double zero yeah. and a ten. Du uh, oh. No, no. No, double zero and a zero. That's ten, isn't it? Yeah, that would be ten, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because if it was double zero and a ten, that would be ten. No, yeah, it sure. would be would ten and a zero. Oh, I always forget this. I always get this mixed up. Ninety so. and a zero is a hundred. Yeah. No, ninety and a zero is ninety. Ninety. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Ten and a zero yeah. on that logic would be ten. Yes. So zero 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 is a hundred. A hundred. He got a hundred. Yeah. Sorry, I've got a hundred. If I got zero zero and a three, would that be three hundred? No, that... that's <laughs> a three. Yeah. That's a three. Yeah. 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 Okay. 
Okay. What did, what did you see? We're all learning this. <laughs> um, now, what did uh, so Dick failed, and what did the good doctor get? Uh, Thirty. So succeeded. Oh. <laughs> so. <laughs> The doctor sort of makes it across, and you see it, Doc, as you're sort of, you know, you're you're perfectly sort of in, in a strange kind of way. You expected to be the one that would suffer the most, and then you just see Zam is moving, and then as this thing turns, there's a stray bit of metal that knocks him off course a little bit, and that <laughs> that causes the other two to spin out a little bit. So you, Doc, you reach the actual the deck itself and the boots and you turn just to see the others kind of they're, they're more tumbling in to the the actual structure itself Zam however I don't know if you ever have to do surgery um, you added your uh, point of stress for the failure yes Zam uh, not yet no Okay. I'm doing that now so that puts me up to 6 and I need you to make a panic roll. Right, okay. So yeah. this is a D20 roll. You want to get above your stress. Uh, right, so I need to get above a six then. Yes. Ah, uh, 19. You do not panic. Of course he doesn't panic. <laughs> but, but he has a, he has a rough Turned time of it. in inside his spaceship, yeah. Yeah, and you can see that Zam, as it, it knocks him off a little bit, and his arms, he's, he sort of straggling to try and, and... Go imagine as well he's like short and squat and yeah. you know yeah. and this thing's still turning so if someone doesn't do something he might be out of your reach fairly soon <laughs> oh. try and grab him <laughs> I'll try and grab him the doc tries to grab him okay <laughs> he just collided with Wendy in, in the space. midst of space yeah. I mean okay Okay, and and also Wendy and Dick are trying to get their bearings bef before the boots go on. Um, I'm I'm me. I'm trying to paint this in the best possible light, Zam. I'm sorry. But no, I'm, but... I'm sorry. I I, I take on bridge <laughs> with the fact. Yes, I rolled badly, but now you're making all the crew hate me even more. No. <laughs> I, I... <laughs> look, look. The, someone doesn't hate you as an arm reaches out to grab you, <laughs> <laughs> and. And what uh, do I? I will say that you managed to grab hold of his hand, Doc. But you're going to have to give me a strength check to pull him in. Okay. <clears throat> I'll use field medicine on this. Or... No, straight, <laughs> straight up. Duology. <laughs> <laughs> He's not an elephant. Uh, that's a uh, sixty-nine. <laughs> And a failure. Nice. Uh, <laughs> but uh, a sexy failure. A sex <laughs> the sexiest failure of the night is um, you <laughs> you do not you've got hold of him but you can't get you can't pull him in. And uh, you get a point of stress, Doc, for this because it's taking quite a lot. Zam is no doubt screaming and effing and jeffing and you can all hear it. In get me in! I'm trying, and it, it, it is putting pressure on your boots, on the mag mm -hmm. boots, for a brief second. I'm just gonna make a roll. Both gonna go floating off into space now, aren't we? <laughs> you do not. <laughs> um, eventually, um, a. <laughs> A bit of um, debris hits Zam on the leg, and he spins. He's very unceremoniously. He lands back in, and he mm. knocks you off. <laughs> briefly knocks you off your feet, Doc, as you are literally. You both tumble into the structure, into the zero g structure. None of this has any gravity, clearly, because half mm. of it, half of it's missing. But you're all currently here. You you scramble for a moment to try and get your footing and. Try and get your feet on the floor. Hit hear that, and the man. Well, that was a success. 
Thanks, Doc. You owe me a drink. And uh, you hear a voice over the comms. You uh, disappeared for a moment there. Is, is, do you all get on okay? No. Oh, ship shape, Captain. Good, good, good. Well, just be safe out there. Just keep me posted. And uh, like I say, don't do anything stupid. And uh, you all turn with that. And it's it's strange seeing the ship... You can see, like, the Susan O'Brien kind of trying to keep pace, but this this vessel is turning, but the mag boots are keeping you in place. Um, do you remember those little, what were they called? The Magna Force. Do you remember those little figures oh, that had, like, God, the... yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Com, com, Starcom. Starcom, yeah. Com, yeah. yeah. Um, you like little Starcom figures on a, on a rotating thing. <laughs> um, that's the special effects that we have in this show. Oh, yeah. Um <laughs> <laughs> And as you um, look back down into the corridor of this thing, you can see that there are. It is bathed in red emergency lights. And we'll pick that up after the break. We'll see you in about five or ten minutes. And uh, yeah, to see what on earth is on. happened to Echo 237. What off earth?
and welcome back. So when we left off, the crew of the O'Brien had just made it to whatever was left of the satellite relay station, Echo 237. And after a bit of a tricky time getting to one of the, the decks, the <laughs> control deck, and they almost lost someone briefly, had it not been for a quick thinking doctor, <laughs> um, they, are, they are all on this structure. So, so begins the exploration. And Mothership is very much a game that is, is built on you know mystery, exploration. It's not just, here's a fight, here's a bit, here's a fight. There's lots of story develops and like you, you loot and salvage and all kinds of things. Because that's how you survive in this game. Sometimes you survive just by the things that you find. Um, or not. We'll see. Because the crew, the crew are on this strange, ancient... Not ancient, but old... Uh, satellite relay station and they can see red lights in the distance as they as they see the corridor curves around in front of them who is um what do you guys do it's over to you guys where are you heading and everything the movements are a little bit slower because you're still using your mag boots and to venture through and like there's bits floating in the air <laughs> Did you say, Vince, that the only light thing in here is the red emergency lighting? <clears throat> you did break up for a moment there, PJ, but yes, you are correct. There is red emergency lights. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no. So <laughs> okay. um, the the more mechanical guys would know that this is probably due to um, whatever's happened, and this is just backup power that switched on the emergency lights. So you can see it. Further, further in, everything is basked in that wonderful red glow that, in no way, worries anyone. The vac suits do have a headlamp on them, don't they? So yeah, we could put the headlamps mm. on. Oh, what a visual that must be. Yeah, and there's probably like the you know the you know when they have the lights, the sort of halogen sort of glow underneath. I know. As we're all it turning no to sense. talk to each other, we're shining lights in each other's faces. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 And they all float off into space at the end. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Look at the wall when you so talk to me. With with Wendy's maintenance, mm -hmm. is it worth going to the computer systems and seeing if there's anything can be taken from there? Yeah. Oh, I was thinking if you were going to, if Zam was going to power cells. Yeah. I would go and look for what would be the next most valuable. Yeah. Loot. Um, and it depends how old this kit is as to yeah. whether it's got like secondhand value. Um, I mean, mm. I'm I'm trained in computers. Mm -hmm. Oh right, okay. So I can go to the like yeah. computer systems and communication. Well, backups. we got like a vac suit storage and a tools and maintenance equipment area that can be looted. I think well Doc would like... go with with Sam then if the other two are going to the computer. Bit. Vince, why is the music on all scary? What? <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't know what Be, you mean. Because slander. Absolute Zams, slander. Zam's just, uh, Zam's just fired up Benice. Yeah. And the way he's rolling, this is not going to go well. Has he fired up Benice? Right. No, not yet. He's going to get to the yeah. power cell. I would imagine that Benice is yeah. something that also sort of connects to his back in some way. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. not like he's wandering around like Blaine no, from Predator. No, 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 <laughs> yeah. no. Okay. So, okay. So who who is going where again? Uh, Zam's going to the power cells. Okay. The, the... Doc's going with Zam. Okay. Also because in the Doc's head, Zam's the one most likely to hurt himself. So. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, surely you should just leave him to die then, you know? <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> So, um, Wendy, uh, Wendy and Dick are sticking together. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay. Head for computers. We, we're going to the computers. Okay. So we will um, we will pick up first with um, the Doc and Zam, as you all sort of head across in in a unit before you come to the first sort of power cell bay to. 
and um, and the Doc and Zam are heading off in one direction. You see that um, Dick and Wendy continue down around this corridor before disappearing out of sight. Um, the the door is shut. There is there is a sort of um, access panel, uh, a code panel for this, for the first power cell bay that you get to. Okay. It's like an emergency lock has shut it down. Is it like a letters and numbers panel? This this one is just numbers. This one's just numbers. numbers. Yeah. I shrug and just try two, three, seven. Um, hey, mate, that doesn't work. When I'm out of ideas. <laughs> try uh, five, two, three, seven. Are you I'll, give it, just I'll give it a try. A, B, C, D, E. <laughs> <laughs> we may have to cut back to them in two years. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> just do one two one two. That's everyone's code, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> one uh, two three four five. Yeah, it is a sort of. Meh, meh. You can't open, please. Right. Okay. So we don't we have do comms. like you. Yeah, you have short range so. comms on these. Okay. I was going to say, we don't have like any kind of investigation checks that we could do or anything, but can we look at the panel to see if any of the numbers look more worn than the others? <laughs> I do you know what? I, I'm not. I'm not going to get you to have stress for this, but I'll just just roll. Just just make an intelligence roll. Oh so. shit. Oh, come on. 19. So, success. Oh, I got 56. I don't think there's... But I don't think there's anything I can add to that. Anyway, you won't get stressed for this. No. This is just... Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, the doc does see that there's a couple of buttons that are a little more worn. Is it 1212? <laughs> No, it seems to be the eight and the four. Um, but that's the only sort of, and it's very, very slight. Very slight. Okay. Okay, Zam's going to contact Dick and Wendy and just say, uh, can you uh, check the computer, see if there's uh, any codes or anything for the uh, power cell doors? We'll It'll have a four and an eight in it. <laughs> okay. It's... I look at Wendy. <laughs> check, check around it that there might be a, like a post-it. Okay. Something written underneath it. Okay. I'll check for a post-it. <laughs> There's a post-it. There's <laughs> half. Half the station has been ripped off, but all the post-its are still perfectly stuck. <laughs> Get milk. <laughs> Things <like that>. <laughs> <laughs> Must call mother. Um, yeah. <clears throat> no, there is no post-it near the access panel for the power cells. I wonder why. You know, someone might have etched it underneath. Yeah, 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 true, true. But, you know, you, you may... No. No, you'll have... Damn it. These were clever people. Um, but as we cut to, and um, as you head over to the uh, the other power cell bay, you can see that this also has a locked down door. Same same thing, same same key code. Um, same same wear on the keypad as well. Then is that? Um, this one has a different wear. Okay. This one is two one. One two one two. <laughs> okay. Are we just going to try like eight four two one? Do Do you want me to come back with the welder, the little welder? Benice to feel like overkill. Yeah, yes. Benice would be overkill. I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We. Uh, we. Yeah. We could use your help on this one. <laughs> do you leave Dick? 
Yeah, I'll I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be I'll be in the uh, computer room. See if I can get a you know access to it. Okay, so you're you're heading to like the the interior, the inner circle. Is that the monitoring panels you're going to, Dick? Yeah, yeah, the computer systems room. Okay, if okay. I can, please. Thank you, Vince. Okay, then uh, we'll cut back to Dick in just a moment as Wendy, jump, 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 as she sees. That's not my boots. That's just Wendy, just yeah. really frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> just, just jabbing away at these access panels. Um, <laughs> as you can, as you spark up the hand welder. Um, I will allow you well, to make uh, make a roll on this. Which one are you going for? Are you going to the, the one closest to you first? The yeah? nearest one. The yeah. nearest one. Um, but then I would say there's no dexterity in this game, so I would probably say Wendy. What do you want? Give me a to use the hand welder how, what stat would you like to use for it convince me <laughs> um, I won't go for that one can I just go strength strength and, kind of and I will say strength of will and purpose um, as Zam is there as well you get advantage on this Ooh. Yeah. Oh. don't try and butter them up now <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you did this Jim <laughs> You created Zam. I was going to say, you created this monster. <laughs> so I shall take the 19, which is a success. Yes. So, and certainly you begin cutting through the doors. It's that it's that wonderful alien sort of like... With all the sparks going... It's really uh, neat. Yeah, really, really neat before eventually... And with the strength roll, it makes sense, Wendy, as well, because the door immediately opens up a small crack. And you have to then pry it open. Um, in this sort of power cell bay, you immediately look, look in and you can see in this particular one, there are certain casings that have fallen over that is in slight dis disarray. There doesn't seem to be any power cells of use in this one. There's none left, which is probably for the best with these small miniature, miniature for want of a better term, bombs in this thing that just got whacked. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, the, but um, and the, the mechanical casings, Zam, you would immediately look at and just think this is a, this is older sort of power cell units um, that have been pretty much mostly taken. Um, there is a, a little bit of debris, and you do see there is a small something's floating in the air in front of you. And it seems to be a small access card with a name on it. I will grab that. Okay. It says um, Drake 8421. That Drake. was the code. 8421 would have done it as well, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go and help Dick. <laughs> so, when. <laughs> <laughs> she hears these two older gents huffing and puffing to themselves. <laughs> you head back, but before you get there, Wendy, Dick, you head into the um, the inner circle of the the communication and monitoring station. Everything basked in a red light. They, there are vast panels with screens that are all off. Everything seems to be switched off. Um, normally, you would, in a sci-fi sort of scenario, there would be lights. You know, there would be all these flashing lights everywhere. There's none of that. Everything seems to be off, pa powerless, completely, completely dead in this place. You do see there seems there's a small um, there's a coffee mug. There's an old metallic coffee mug that is still like on a coaster by one of the monitoring systems. And by these monitoring systems, they all have they all have small stools that are like welded in place in front of all these monitoring sort of stations. One thing that does and in the first one, the first larger one with all these panels, and you do see a couple of post it notes. But just with <laughs> just with scribbles, numbers, different sort of like 
you know, codes and things like that. There's, there's not an A421 because you need an access card for that. Um, but, but certainly, you, you would imagine. And there's a, a couple of post-its that just fly by. With, um, need new milk or something like that written on it. Um, in, in, the, in, in the zero gravity. Um, but you do notice when it comes to the the second station which is the computer systems and, and communication backups because mm. you were heading there as well weren't you? yeah there is it all looks dead apart from there is a blinking red light there is there is a sort of unit that has several and the way that this I, I like that sort of retro futuristic vibe which is like cool sci-fi stuff but also has that also has that chunky you know alien vibe of like everything is cartridges and stuff like that do you know what I mean you've got yeah. to manually do things so there are like these storage cartridges in and above and each one of them has a light above it on the first one at the top there's a blinking light um, is the cartridge pushed in it's still in yeah there's a couple of them there are a couple of them that are missing from their banks but and there's only there's to be honest there's only a couple left but there's one in there and the light's blinking uh, is there like a keyboard on the terminal that yeah I can yeah there, there is a keyboard on the tap, terminal tap the space bar you would have to I would uh, you'd have to I'd say make an intelligence check but you can use if you've got computers and or any sort of computer skill I have got computers I have uh, hacking in my expert skills. Can I use hacking? You can, because this <laughs> is this is a monitor. This is a system that has been down for a long time. This is this has picked something up. Fucking hell! <laughs> That's gone well then. Yeah, it all went great. A Eighty-eight. Eighty-eight. Yeah. Which is um, a double, isn't it? Point of stress. Yep. yep, 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 yep. Give me a panic check. Oh, hang on. What? What is your panic. What is your panic currently? Uh, my stress is on four. Your stress is on four, so you got to roll above a four. Twelve. You're okay. <laughs> Can you see how this game is awesome? As things get more tense. <laughs> Just <laughs> pressing a space bar. How's this going wrong? <laughs> because it's not the space bar you need to press. Uh, have you tried switching you it off and on key. again? Yeah. Um, Control, Alt, and Delete. It's not working. Yes. And, and you try, like... All F4? You try plugging in some wires, and then... <laughs> there is some sparking. And... Whoop. Like, there is, like, some buzzing, and... These chunky discs, you can tell, are beginning to heat up. You need to act quick. Ooh, uh, um, uh. I start tapping the space bar again. Anything? It's in? not on. It's not on. It's not on. Yeah. Uh, 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 okay. I put. I pull out the one that's blinking, or try okay. to pull it out because okay. it's bank. There is a. There is a small latch, but give me a give me a strength check because it's been there a while. You flick the the latch and you're trying to pull this out because these are these aren't like a this isn't like a phone size. This is a something you got to pull out. Eighty eight. <laughs> Come on. I'm changing these dice. <laughs> Eighty eight. Okay. Is that this, like a critical? That is a critical fail. You got another point of stress and make me another panic check. You got to get above. A, is it five now? Roll me that d20. Panic checks are d20s, by the way, for anyone mm. listening. That's rolled away. I've got another d20. He's panicking himself. <laughs> <laughs> this is horrible, Vince. Time out. What are you doing? Is it? <laughs> Seventeen. Seventeen. You're, Seventeen. You're, you're all right, but the. The actual the handle of this disc pulls off in your hand. So it's so it's still in there. It's still in there. It looks like it's jostled a little bit, and it seems to be stuck in there. It's going to it's going to take some nifty fingers to try and get this thing out without damaging it. I get out my screwdriver and 
try and uh, okay <laughs> wedge it out. Okay. <laughs> now, does this, this come is on... why the android went nuts and killed us all? <laughs> <laughs> this okay. So you're going to try and quickly just get the screwdriver in there and then try and prize it out. Yeah. 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 How you? Count as hacking? How are you? That is not going to be hacking. How are you going about this? Are you having? Are you thinking about it, or are you going to just brute force this thing out? Um. How hot is it getting? Is it starting to smoke? A little bit of smoke has, has started at the back. Uh, I'll try and be as gentle as I can, you know, without like trying to snap it off or anything. But okay, okay. So yeah, so, getting... so there's no handle. But um, and give me that intellect check. Do you have anything that could help you with this? Oh no. Okay. Absolutely not. <laughs> Hopefully these new die. And this is when Wendy <laughs> arrives to see. Dick sort of he's struggling with this I'm picking up post-its <laughs> and putting them in my pocket I've rolled a 54 oh and that's I, I had to beat 48 so oh no well the, the, I mean the good news is it wasn't a critical fail so the screwdriver stays in one piece but Do I, think... I still get a bit of stress <laughs> you do get another point of stress oh my god <laughs> <laughs> Wendy! When, <laughs> when did you see this? Is that you? Yeah, what's going on? Uh, it's, it's, it's starting to heat up. I'm trying to get these things out of there. <laughs> and I, I beckon her to these. You can see you can see what's happened now. Like there's, You can't smell it, but there's definitely sparks are beginning to happen. You did see Dick just jabbing at it with a screwdriver, which is a very, very silly thing to do and could have gone very badly. <laughs> literally come here with a welder. I mean, what do you want? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you leaving the disc in there? Can I have um, another go at it? Or is why, why, Wendy why, having a go? Why, why, what is it? What do you want? Why Why do you want this? It's, it's, it's starting to heat up and smoke. I'm, I'm scared we're going to start a fire. Can we start a fire? Uh, technically, in the vacuum of space, no, you're going to... <laughs> A space fire. Space fire. Mm, space I'm doing fire. space welding. We can have space fires. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Sharp world. It is a spoiler. Don't think too much about science when it comes to this game. The game that I run. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't understand any of it. This is um, why Professor Brian Cox isn't here then. Is yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say, the moment when we get to medical checks, PJ's going to just be like, yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah whatever. whatever. What I did was I fixed them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can I fix it by hitting it? <laughs> You're just gonna hit the thing out of the. Oh, no. Can I? Can I? What did we want? We wanted some strength. I don't know if I would have brought this with me. I have a toothpick. A titanium toothpick. It's in my kit. It is. In, it is in your personal kit. In my personal kit. I'm. Yeah. I'm wondering if I would have brought it with what? me. Something that that big. Yeah. What are you yeah. gonna do with it? Kind of... Okay. Leverage. Tiny. You said you wanted tiny thing fingers to get in there. Okay. You're gonna have to be quick thinking about it. All right. You get one. This is the last chance that you get to get this stories disc out. Okay. What would you like to roll? It's. I would say it's either going to be. Oh. Uh... It doesn't sound like you're using your intellect to do it. But I... I was going to go strength. But that doesn't feel right either. I would say because of the nature of the... Oh, I hate to do this to you. Go on. I will, there's nothing important on there. I will say... I will say, do a speed check, but I'll allow you to add your military training. Quick thinking. Oh, thank you. Makes any difference at all. What does? That's a thirty-two against a thirty-seven. Thank you for letting me. <laughs> and you, you see, like, Weak. at first, Wendy seems non-plus, but then, like, she looks at it, and you see it, Dick. There's a, 
there's a strain. She goes into a zone in some ways. You can see it on her face. She just she pulls out the. She doesn't even look for the titanium. She just pulls it out and then immediately just starts filling around and then gives it a good yank and takes this storage cart, cart charge. And you can see Wendy that the handle has been broken off. You can see the deck of them. And um, hand over the the cartridge and just say thank you, Jezebel. I'll <laughs> Oh, we're naming toothpicks now. Brilliant. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Brilliant. Get that merch ready, I say. Uh... Note to yourself. Okay. Uh, so, Dick, you have this somewhat battered, and it looks, um, on the connections, it looks a little bit tarnished. Maybe a little bit what? melted in places, but we'll have to see. Thank you, but... Wendy. Well, it's still usable. It's all right. That's all right. Hopefully yeah. we can get some uh, information on this. It's, is there anything else in this room that looks like valuable computer equipment that we should salvage? Vince. <laughs> a lot of this looks... I mean, there's lots of monitoring stations. There's nothing really... Unless you open things up and try to like just basically take things out. Pre, you know, it's all a bit retro. It's all a bit really? retro, yeah, yeah. This is a decommissioned satellite station, so... You know, even even for your ship, it may not be usable. But your ship has lots of scrap. So yeah. if you want to but, go but for salvage, it's like anything we get, we we can yeah. sell, kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. So just yeah. for good stuff. Yeah. Well, you copper can sell wire, copper. Always oh, people always want copper. Okay. Copper. Yeah. Strip out right. Copper. We're gonna start stripping. Open the copper. <laughs> um, so while you guys, I mean, you you can certainly like pick up some miscellaneous well, can salvage. Can we be looking want. for like uh, I don't know, like a main power turn back on lights type thing I would say you would know I, I, I'll give you this you would know that in this the, the red light is the backup power that's on so you would need to go to an access terminal for that you're, you're not sure depending on what Zam and Dr. Forrest find in the power cells the power cells are probably the thing that will switch everything else on Fair enough. But the, the the access terminal and everything is what controls the backup power and things like that. So you'd need to okay. head over head over to there. Meanwhile, with Zam and Doc Forrest back at the other power cells, you uh you use the key code, I'm guessing? Yeah. Eight yeah. four two one. Eight four two <laughs> eight four two one and uh you uh, as the doors they open and you see like a bay of sort of power cells and this room also looks like it's been sort of moved like it's it's been tussled and, and moved about but there is there are some panels from the ceiling that have been loosened and sort of hanging down there's wires there's wires and cables just hanging down near these there there is a power cell in there. There's one power cell that would need reconnecting. If you were to put power, you would know this, Sam. It would need reconnecting to, if you wanted any power to this place, or you could take it with you. Um, you may be able to use it on your ship at some point. Okay. Um, but in the, the cables yeah. and stuff that have hung down, and, and certainly there are panels that are just, the, the panels that have fallen from this, the ceiling are floating in the air. There is something that is immediately quite striking to you about it. Um, the light, the red lights are sort of flashing in this, and in amongst all the wires, the wires and cables and everything, there seems to be something caught up amongst it all. And that it's just slowly, it's it's flowing in this zero g. It's flowing like seaweed under the sea. Is it and there's the something that there is there is something organic that looks organic within it. You would need to get a little bit closer to see what it is. I get a little bit closer. <laughs> Don't get excited, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> um, as you um, you get a little bit closer, you can see 
that in amongst all the, the cables and wires there is there is a hand in there it is and when you look further it is a good it's a human arm that goes up until the cuts it stops about at the forearm but it's seemingly sort of caught up within all of these wires um, it looks partially melted and it's missing one of its fingers and another one of the fingers looks like the bone is visible like the skin and sinew and everything has just been melted off and there is a little bit of detail you can see on the forearm itself, the skin of the forearm, before it is lost within all these these wires and everything. And we need to leave. Roll an in intellect check. Doctor, please? Nope. 88. 88. Point, 88. point of stress and panic, which makes mm -hmm. sense because I was going to ask you to roll panic check anyway. Oh, it's a cursed number. <laughs> it is. It is. So... I've got a for panic. I've got to roll above my current stress. Is yes. That... What is your current stress, Doctor? Four. And I've rolled a twelve. Okay. It is. It is shocking. It is. Your your mind races, and you you can feel your heart in your chest. It's like seeing this human arm in here, but you you don't lose it. And I Zam, go. Zam is leave. at this point. You can see that the doc is starting to freak out. You're kidding, doc. There's an arm. We should go. I don't know why there's an arm. I don't want to We're find out arm. why there's an arm. We should go. Yeah, we got to sort out this power situation first. I'm going to call we? to. I'm going to call to Wendy and Dick and find out if they want power, or if they are happy for me to take the cell. Okay, so you get the message through from her, Zam, on the comms. Hey, uh, Wendy, Dick, uh, you uh, you need any power down there, or are you happy for me to just take this cell? What do you think, Wendy? Oh, all these computers are so old. <laughs> and... I'm not even sure they'll work. We can just take it, I think. I mean, All right, I'll take the cell. Where, where not, are you he's standing not like as make you this say thing this? Work again, are we? Where are you standing as you say this, Sam? Uh, he'll be near the power cell. You're near the power cell. Yeah. <laughs> he, would have, <laughs> he would have been making his you way went, to you the went power into, cell. You went into the room near the cables that are hanging down. So the dock went in near the cables, so I figured I'd move towards the power cell. Yeah. That, wait, it's almost yeah. like the. To describe better, there's th this box room. Yeah. The power cells are on the other side of the room. Yeah. And the cables are hanging down. It just basically okay. looks like cables are, are hanging down. Yeah. You, I, it's up to you whether you've noticed what's here, but you would have had to sort of duck underneath it, which you did. If you said you were on the other side, you're on the other side of it. If you're near the power cells. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I figured like Zam's not really paying attention to his <laughs> not arms paying attention. and stuff. No, so it, I would imagine it's as, as Zam sees the power cells, he's sort of ducking underneath all these wires yeah. and that's when the doc notices what is hanging. Yeah. Maybe he kind of disturbs it as he's moving it and then the arm just yeah. kind of like jolts down yeah, a bit. Yeah, it just jol it. jolts down a bit. Um, and you see this, doc. But as Zam, and you're looking at the power cell, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> so you've got your back to this. Yeah. As he's talking, you see the arm begin moving, and then the wires begin to shudder before some of them, like mechanical struts, begin to appear at the side, almost like strange spider legs, like centipede legs, as this hand then slowly begins moving towards Zam and you can see that all of these cables are attached to this thing. It is like a snake-like centipede that is heading towards Zam. 
I'll, I'll shout a warning. Is that, can I? If you can, yeah. You see this happen, um, <laughs> but I will say this. <laughs> Bye, Zan. <laughs> <laughs> Um, in order to shout that warning, both of you need to make a fear save. Okay. Okay. Um, I've got nothing that will help with this. No, I can't see anything <clears throat> that would particularly help me. Oh, here we go. I need a oh, 14, I got 18. It's a fear save, yeah? Yeah. So 32 is what I needed. Yeah. Uh, I got a 92. Okay, so you both fail. Yeah. So this, you do not get a chance to react first as this thing yep. sort of moves down and it flows, it flows outwards. And you see the hand in this zero gravity, Doc, you don't even get a chance, you're stunned into silence, sort of like seeing this strange sort of is flowing and then you see it doc you see the hands as it curves up there is a massive sort of cable that attaches itself to the back of the hand and then it reaches for zam okay zam still got his back to it zam's well, got yeah. his back to yeah, it he's, so. just, he's just trying to disconnect <laughs> so. his power cell <clears throat> Why didn't we split the party? <clears throat> I want to know why the coffee cup is still on the desk. <laughs> <laughs> is this a post-it note? As, <laughs> as I can make things from them. Azam, you feel this thing, something hit you in the back. Oh, and, and you God, feel something. What are you doing behind there? Crawling <laughs> over your shoulder. And with what a sort of. What the hell's wrong with you, Doc? And, and as, as you turn around, you see this hand. Crawl over the visor Jeez, what the hell is of this? your spacesuit, and you can see it is a melted human hand. But in its palm, there is a hole that has rows and rows and rows of sharp metallic teeth, and it's just going. Get this thing off of me! And, it's, oh, and you can see it's, it's making that sort of. It's, it's squeaking against your visor, but it cannot get purchase. Uh, can I try and wrestle it off? You are, you are okay. We're on to the next round, so everyone now can make a speed check. You would probably hear the other two of you would hear this, so everyone is going to make a speed check. Just the way that thing to check though. Go on. Um, I should have seven stress now, yeah, because I failed that last yes. roll. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Um. So while we roll in, sorry. you are everyone is rolling a speed check. Yeah. Okay. And the way that encounters or like violent encounters or things like this work in Mothership, there is no I'm not rolling against anyone. If the crew succeed on their speed check, they go first. If they fail, whatever it is goes first. So it's as simple as that. But remember, two of you are on the other side, and the rounds are kind of like ten seconds. In space. Can we add things to our speed checks? Yes, if you um, like I will allow. Military I will, I, training. I will allow that. Yeah, military training. I will allow that. I don't think Zam's got anything that can help. It you. Doesn't matter, even if I could. No. Well, I've I've rolled an nope. eighty-five anyway, so. Oh, I rolled an eighty-four. Ah, oh, that's nice. <laughs> Sixty-seven. So no. Okay. Oh, thirty-three. I had to beat thirty-five. Yes, so Dick, you can go first. You are you're going to have to. It might take an entire turn to get to where you can, where you know they are. I figured Sam screaming over the comms. You can hear you hear the panic. Get it off me! Get it off! <laughs> Wendy, we better go. <laughs> and uh, Dick, is that is that what you're doing? You're just basically booking it. I mean, in terms I'm of running like, on the spot. If we're using a, another popular RPG, TTRPG term, your uh, action dash. <laughs> you I are action, action dashing. So you're using kind of like your two movements for, for one of you. The, the yeah. action economy to just 
get there as far as, as so if it gets me to the to, to the, that to that is door. It the very top it's the top the, the one top that, on yeah, the map yeah, yeah the top one and certainly you get there and you see what is happening everyone else failed their spe- speed check yes yep um you would see that the rest of this thing sort of it continues to move down out from the ceiling and with the wrench of metal a sharp bit of shrapnel comes down with it almost like a tail and it sort of whips round and it's and it whips round to hit zam with this sharp bit of shrapnel and you can see that as this thing moves there is horrible sickly dark black brown oily like ooze that is sort of like it sort of drips and floats through space but I'm going to see if I can hit Zach <laughs> with this thing and it misses <laughs> as this thing as Zam is recoiling and the as you see, Zam, as you panic and recoil, yeah, he's just got it, and he's just like fighting. Yeah. You know, and yeah. this, and as he's fighting with it, this thing cannot, it, it can't stab him. Um, what were the, what is everyone else going to do, Wendy? It may take your turn to get there. Now, um, can I pick up the mug, and then run? <laughs> Okay, you pick up the mug. It takes a little while because it's magnetic. That's why it's stuck in and it hasn't. It's not floating around. So there's a little metallic mug. You pick up. <laughs> yeah. So you will be able to get there on this turn by the end of this. As Wendy's doing this, as Wendy's approaching, and Doc, you see Dick has just arrived, and Zam is fighting with this strange, almost necrotic centipede of metal and flesh. What is this, Doc? Doc Diviner. Most face bullshit. <laughs> Never mind what it is. Get it off! <laughs> Try tranking it. You're just it. leaning against the wall with your arms yeah. folded at that point. Vin- Vince, can I see any other organic components other than the hand? Um, there is a certain... There's. You, you can possibly see other bits of flesh, but there's nothing really. It seems like the hand is the majority of this... Thing. Um, I'll allow an intellect roll if you want to like give it a good look. Okay. I'll, I'll allow that for free because I can give you a bit more informa- information. And that is six. Oh, so that's a success. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. <clears throat> um, then you you would have clocked this as it came down. There was a tattoo on the forearm. It seems to be like of, of Nordic designers, like a hammer that had like two snakes sort of wrapping around it. Before the bottom of the tattoo is just tarnished by all this melted skin. Um, you see some of these strange centipedes like mechanical spider like legs that have popped out from within these wires. Some of them seem to have a slightly organic look to them, like bits of them are made up of muscle and bone. But it's a real hodgepodge of different things that have come together in some kind of way. Can I... Um, is it possible for me to take a shot at the hand with my trank gun? The hand... Uh, at the moment, Zam is... Um, sort of wrestling with it. Unless you've okay. turned round, Zam. Yeah, I figured at this point I would have like, yeah, turned, turned around. Because these two idiots have just stood there watching yeah. as I'm wrestling with this thing. <laughs> You can, um, and in terms of, your, I mean, it is nearby, so you can take a shot with your drank, drank gun if you want. Yeah, I think I will. I'm trying to remember what I do, how I do that. So it will be a combat roll. Oh, yeah. Where's my weapon? Uh, 29 my combat's 31 Ooh. so roll your um, damage roll a damage is NA it 
It's the target must make a body save at advantage ah, I see. or fall unconscious for 1d10 rounds. Okay. Good shot, Doctor. Very good shot. Yeah. Body save. Okay. Right. Here we go. Did you say at disadvantage or was it advantage? Adva ad advantage. Advantage. <clears throat> Uh, this it hits this thing, and you see it sort of it the the dart sort of gets lost within that, and it it shudders for a moment, but it keeps going. Okay. Okay. Um, at this time, uh, I think Zam, you're you've still got have to go. What are you doing? Yeah. So uh, I'm going to try and like you know pull it off. Okay. Laser. So make a strength check. Yeah. I haven't really got anything that can help me, have I? Oh, strength, it's 34. Oh, come on. 62. 62. So that's another point of stress. Yeah. My <laughs> stress. How are you looking with your stress? Uh, I'm that... on eight, 8 now. Okay. Um, so um... if I get up to 20, what happens then? Oh, if, you, is the maximum. if you have a panic check, you'll probably you'll probably yeah. die. Uh, okay. <laughs> but don't worry, you might die before yeah. then. Everyone, make yeah. a speed check. Oh, I don't know why I did it. I didn't need to. Uh, an eighty and a zero, so that would just be eighty. Yeah. 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 Uh, Eighteen. One eight. So that's success. Nice. Do I get? Do I get stressed because of that failure, or is that just a? <laughs> I'm not. I won't do it for the okay. for the initiatives. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. I could do, but that could be brutal. <laughs> um, no. And Zam's having a bad day. Is he? <laughs> Zam's having a great time. Um. Okay. What did Wendy get? Uh, forty for a fail. Okay. Dick, what did you get? Uh, fifty-six fail. Fifty-six. So Doc, you go first. I'm just going to run in and try and pull it off him at this point, I think. Okay. Okay, then, Doc. Um, make a strength check. Can I use my zoology? <laughs> um, I don't think I'll allow that. No, if, I'm if, if, it was Zeno, if it was xenobiology, then maybe. But... I have xenobiology? No, I don't. Mm. Uh, strength, that is... Oh, success! Seventeen. <laughs> Might have to check this dice. <laughs> the MVP that is Dot Forest, it's sort of like, oh. dum, dum, and he grabs as and as you're push, you've managed to push it away from you slightly, Zam, yeah. and then the Doc sort of grabs hold of it, and you have you have hold of it, Doc, as it sort of it begins sort of thrashing. <laughs> do you, do you um, is there anything else you'd like to do in your turn? Do you want to move? You can move. Or, I mean, you're all in close quarters and Wendy and Dick are in the, in the doorway. Don't. I'm, I'm sort of. I'm just holding it like that now, am I? Yeah, that? as this thing is. And it's probably. It's, it's like you're just, I would say, an Alsatian size. Do you know what I mean? If you grabbed hold of an Alsatian and picked it up, this thing is big. I don't think there's like... anything else I really can, can okay. do then. Okay. Um... So he, the docs, he put. He, grabbed it off and you can see now like the bits going and this this strange movement of of metal wire and organics is sort of it's like it's like nothing you've ever seen before make a sanity save oh fuck okay as you are very as you're twenty Good man, MVP. The duck is the yeah. man. <laughs> I never roll like this no, in D and D. Save those for this game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> as, as you're sort of, sort of struggling with this thing, but you're also you're taking, you get more details of that's probably when you see the tattoo, like fully, and the hand sort of like begins to twist around. The rest of you failed your speed checks, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
as as this hand sort of turns, sort of snaps round, and then it reaches out for the doctor, just brask it, and it goes for his shoulder. <laughs> this thing just can't munch on any of you. As it's strugg as you're struggling, it's just going. And this is at the point where you see the the more of this thing. It's like, sort of, um, Jesus Christ! And it's it's, but it's it's not out of your grip. It's just trying to get you. Um, who got the highest roll? Who got the lowest roll after? I got an eighty. Yeah, so it won't be you. Of forty. Forty. So I'm sure. I think Dick, you got any fifties, didn't you? I think. Yeah, fifty-six. Yeah. So Wendy, you're next when you see this happening. And as as Doc is holding it, there's even more of this strange, strange orange this sludge just flowing into the room. <laughs> what, what do you do? Um... Oh, actually, I think because it's the, this is the first time you've seen something like this. Mm-hmm. I should have... Shame on me, because there's so much going on. Um, but with panic checks, whenever I think they, they kick in, whenever anyone sees something that is likely to make you panic. <laughs> so, if you would like to roll me a panic check before your turn, Wendy. Uh, that's a d20, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, da -da. <laughs> it's a natural 20, which isn't going to come up into on Friday's d, &D. <laughs> 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 uh, um, but, but with that natural 20, you are locked in yeah however when i whenever i panic i didn't panic you didn't panic that's good yeah nope, that's all cool yeah, <laughs> yeah. okay uh, so what what do you do the... can i see the the palm and the little kind of beep, 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 yeah beep, beep. i would i would say this thing is thrashing around and as the, as it tries to get the dock you can see this thing has a mouth in the back of it and a cable sort of going through the I don't know how we're going to do this. Can I run at it and take a swing and try and whack it right in the palm with the metal cup? <laughs> yes. That really hurt. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, roll me a combat check with whatever uh, can you want to use. My military training. Or do, you know what, do you know what? I will allow both military improvised weapons. It's an improvised weapon, for want of a better term, and I'll allow the athletics because you're going to have to with the spacesuit. You're going to have to really push hard to make a connection. Yay! Success. <laughs> Just okay. okay. Roll me. Um, I would say with that, it would be a D5. So roll me a D10 for damage, mm -hmm. but then I just half it. Whatever you are. One. Okay, so it, do, it does one point of damage. Does one point of damage. It does one point of damage, and, and you see this thing now as it lifts up, and but what it does one point of damage. But one thing that you do do is when you jam it in, you block this thing as it starts going. So for a round, or maybe two rounds, actually, I will I will do a roll to make see how many rounds this thing. Okay, so for two rounds, it will not be able to use this mouth because it immediately just starts and just destroying this coffee cup and you see it begin to disappear I um did that. <laughs> and so when he gets just everybody out now 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 <laughs> the go is... go <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. everybody in <laughs> put it down doc put it down <laughs> yeah um dick it's your turn oh, shit I, I don't know what to do you see that uh, the doc is struggling with this thing that is kind of being distracted by Wendy at the moment. I mean, is is, is the majority of it like on him, sort of thing, or is there like a? It hasn't wrapped it around him. When it when it attacked Zam, it was climbing around and almost wrapping around him. The doc pulled it off, so he is like he's just like a picked up a giant centipede and it's wriggling. So it's not wrapped around him. Now I will see another thing about mothership that is to bear in mind with it with encounters and stuff. It's not just a case of I have this weapon, I'll use this. 
like when things attack you, you can you can also think about where you are. Like in terms of your AC, you can like get behind cover. You can use tools. Anything. If you if if you if you describe something in that scenario that you think I'm going to do this to this thing, then we can make it happen. If it's there, then you might be able to use it. So it's not just about who has a gun. You know. Is it? I mean, I have got a gun. Is it stunned <laughs> at all? It is not stunned. Or is it? It's still. Yeah, it's, it's still moving, and it's currently crunching down. Like you can just see it. You've seen um, with the trash compactor that you have on the ship. You've seen metal just get absolutely munched on by something metallic, and it's it's like that. It's not. And it's not. These aren't human teeth. This is shards. This is shrapnel that is chewing on this thing. Right? Can I? Can I try and put my foam gun in its mouth? <laughs> well, I would say at this point, there's currently a coffee cup blocking its mouth. Because it's okay, going to take two yeah. rounds for that coffee cup to disappear. <laughs> See, if, I can't hold my action or anything like that. I don't think so, not on this one. But I will look it up for next session. Um, The doc is struggling with it. Yeah, I don't because it just feels like if I if I try and tackle it, it's just going to be like passing a hot potato. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've got it now. Yeah, you take. <laughs> I've, and I've, also, I've do not do not forget that this whole thing is happening in zero gravity. Oh, just God, bear that in mind. All right, I'll try and I'll try and help Doc and like grab the back end of it. Okay, um, and the back end where you see now this is like a there's part of like ship it's 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 strange there's a bit of metal on the back of it that doesn't belong and it's almost like a shard that's stuck at the back this is a thing that tried to pierce zam um are you going to try and it's almost like yep. a, a scorpion sting in, in in some sort of way the back of this thing are you going to try yeah, and wrap get... your hands around there i'm going to get my other hand cut off yeah <laughs> okay make a strength check I would say with advantage as the doc is struggling with it. Because this thing's trying oh, to do so things. I get, I, get, I get a re-roll on that. Yeah. Thank God. Because that was 65. Uh, eight. 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 Then eight. You, you you watch out for this thing. As this blade, for want of a better term, is like swishing around the zero gravity, you pick your moment and you grab hold... At the point where you can actually... You don't grab hold of the blade, so therefore you keep all your fingers. Um, but you have the back of this thing. What do I'm you do? I've got it, Doc! I've got it! What, what do you do? Now I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> what you, do I do now? I don't know! You, you could... I mean, I will say this. Just give the players... Oh. I'm, like I say, I'm a, I'm a generous warden. Um, you could swing this thing. Because you were right there, so you didn't take any movement to get there. So you have another... I would say, because you grabbed hold of this thing, you could move it, you could... How far... It, it's thrashing about. Can I run with it? You want to you wanna drag it out of the room? A little bit. I will let you drag it out of the room, yeah. yeah. Okay, how far can I get to it? Because I, I want to take like the big open, like gaping hole in the ship and try and throw it. Nice. I would say, I'm um, just going to have a look at the, the map. I would say you could get halfway there. With this thing thrashing, you could possibly get halfway there. So you're heading for the entrance that you all uh, arrived on. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So with the with the mag boots, ka -chung, just ka -chung, as you're dragging this thing <laughs> behind you. And you can see, the, as the rest of you, Doc, you see it as, it as it passes, there's even more of this sludge just goes... <laughs> And these sort of I just let go. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, the, that. and these that's a free action. As you see, these tendrils go. <laughs> and when do you see like the, the even more of the coffee cup is <laughs> as as Dick disappears out of the room and he's taking this thing out of the room. Zam, it is your turn. So is this thing still connected to all the wires that are no, going? No, it it completely it came out. the The came tail out, the tail bit was the last yeah. bit that came out. Okay. Mm. It was sort of hidden amongst everything that was. Okay. I wonder what I can do to help Dick. 
grab that power cell. Yeah. Well, it's not going to be running I mean, I don't that power cell, though, is it? Like, because you haven't thrown it yet, have you? No, he's dragging it. No. Yeah. Right. I will hurl it on my next turn. Hopefully. Do you want to grab that power cell? What do you intend to do with it? I, I love, an idea. I love this game. To okay, up. <clears throat> right. Okay, so I've got. I mean, one thing we could do is I could take the power cell, run to to Dick, and put the power cell. If it's munching its way through the cup, maybe put the power cell in there, so that when we hurl so it, it'll eat the power cell and then explode. Okay, um, I will say. Because of the nature of this, it's a, Are you going to make me roll. No, I'm not going. I'm not going to make you roll because it is an <laughs> it is an old. I love that idea as well. Um, <laughs> it's it's brilliant. Um, because of the old casing and stuff, and you know yeah. Paracels because you were the one that had to fix the ones mm -hmm. in the ship before. And I'd already started disconnecting it. Yeah, he started know? disconnecting it. I imagine when... Zam, Zam sees that and he just kicks the last bit out and yeah. pulls the the cell out, and you you can catch up with with Dick. I would say, I, I would say, you're catching up with Dick. You have not given yeah. the power cell to this thing, so your yeah. action was kind of to pull the power cell out, mm -hmm. and you've caught up with Dick. So Dick has the mm -hmm. the creature, and you have the power cell. You're so, sort of mm -hmm. side by side, yeah, walking out. Okay. Yeah, and I'll tell him the plan. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna shove this down its throat, and then you throw it. <laughs> okay. Be quick about it. It's this. Um, it's not making any kind of screeching noise that you would hear. I don't know what you would hear through, through the helmets or whatever. Um, okay, another round. Everyone make a speed check. Can I add my zero G? Yes, you can add your zero G to yeah. this, Zam, I would say. Oh. <laughs> Get in. 16. 16. All oh, right, brilliant. Okay, so Zam got 16. Wendy, what did you get? Three. Oh, Wendy got three. Dick, what did you get? 51. Fail. Okay. And Doc? 89, so yeah, fail. Okay. 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 89. Okay, so Wendy goes first as you see the other two disappear, and you can you can hear you can hear the plan over the over your monitor, so you know what um, they're planning to do. Captain, <laughs> <laughs> it takes a Wendy, uh, so, sorry, honey, I was. Um, is everything okay over there? Everything, everything is is fine. Um, just. Something may come out of this satellite very shortly. Just avoid it. Okay? Oh. Okay. Is, what, is, it, more, is it more, more... Keep away. Keep away. Oh, Jesus Christ. And he, there, she cuts off. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then... Uh, they've kind of got this. <laughs> yeah. Well, I hope so. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll go and just be ready to give an extra okay. shove yeah. if they need it. Yeah. So, after communicating with the captain, Wendy heads out, so you're with them as well as this thing is writhing around and Dick, Dick's in the lead. It's like, it's like um, Dick, it's almost like you're carrying like a fucking sleeping bag filled with a fucking wolverine. Do you know what I mean? If, you, if someone yeah. had zipped like a vicious animal in a sleeping bag, that's what's fucking happening right now. Um, but it is Zam's turn. Yeah. So I'm going to feed it the power cell. So I'm going to put the power cell inside the mug. Okay. Inside the coffee mug. So that it it's a big starts. power... I will say, uh, maybe I should state this. Okay. The power cell is a big... It's almost like a like a petrol tanker. So, not a tanker. 
Um, that'd be massive if you wouldn't be able to carry that. Like a, like a jerry can. Yeah, jerry can. It's that kind of okay. thing. But I will say, you can see as this thing is almost it's on its back and as it's chewing mm. on the cup, there are the, the sort of legs things going, just trying to get purchased, but it's on its back, so it's like... I can kind of put it in between the legs so that it'll grab hold of it and then start feeding yeah, on that yeah that, yeah, that? yeah yeah you yeah. you place this thing down and the legs immediately they start grabbing yeah. hold of it and it's like and you notice as like with the strange metallic or, you know you even see it at this point seeing that close is that bone is that mm. what the fuck's going on i will say you can do that make a sanity save okay because you're seeing this thing up close now so class yeah this thing. so just roll sanity yeah yeah yeah. Is it yeah, sanity save, yeah. Oh god. Oh come on. Eighty nine. <laughs> oh you did it then. We're sending yeah, a new dice. Yeah, t- totally. Totally did it. Um, yeah, it's fine. Everything's everything's gravy. Get game one uh stress? Yeah. So that's supposed to be up to nine. And am I gonna have to do a a roll as well? Yeah, I think I'm gonna get yeah. you to make a seeing this okay. thing yeah, seeing this thing up close again, make a panic check. Oh ho, ho, natural twenty. <laughs> <laughs> you are resolute seeing this thing. Yeah. So I think I'm You're like, what take I'm gonna that do then. Yeah. Go on, put some flavor. Get my get my foot on it. So switch the mag boot off. So I've got one mag boot on, one mag boot switched off. Going to get my foot on it so that when Dick tries to hurl it, I'm going to give it a shot with my foot as well. Nice. Nice. Okay. It is the creature's turn. Oh. What is it going to do? Because... Just eat the mug. Because I've got to think about... You have very cleverly neutralised both its mouth and its tail. It is going to try and it's going to make a strength check to see if it can escape. It grabbed hold of that. The power mm. cell. It's going to make a strength save to make. Oh, that was a d20 that I rolled in there. So I'll, I'll keep. I'll keep <laughs> Oh, that was that was even worse. I rolled a seventy-nine, so it fails. It's still, but as you see, is is it struggling? It, you you see Zam, like as like these weird um, legs. They're starting to. It won't be long before they almost pierce that power cell. As they're starting to, mm. they're tensing up, and you can see it go. Um, You're gonna have to get rid of this thing, Dick. And it's Dick's turn. Make my way. I, I drag it as fast as I can to the yeah, and you're t- to the coal. Yeah, you can. So your movement is to drag it to the edge. Yep. And you're going to try and swing that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, like how you um, you know, when you, you and you should have one advantage of your friends, if, you? if me and Wendy are going to help him. I think you know. Yeah, can I get that? Yeah. I would say, yeah, because you did say you were going to help. Yes, I'll give yeah. you a strength check with advantage because Zam's giving it a kick and Wendy's giving it a push and you're just using that forward momentum to try and... Okay, guys, I'm three. One, One. two, three. <laughs> that was a 52. <laughs> three. 18. Yeah! <laughs> As, you know... <coughs> It looks extra cool because we're in zero G. It is in slow motion. <laughs> as he swings this thing, as it's and Dick launches it outside, and this thing begins. You you see it. It has nothing to grab hold of. It's it's almost concentrating too much on the power cells. When do you see the cup disappear down his throat as the mouse starts to go? As it begins to float away and uh doc you've still got a turn what is doc gonna do i walk over and go Did anyone say smile you son of a bitch or think again and just say give that man a hand <laughs> 
and it takes As a it moment. Explodes. And it does disappear. It, it takes a little while longer. So you say that, give that man a hand. It just all stop. <laughs> <laughs> like the end of a 70s uh, cop show or something. As this thing slowly floats off into the distance. And nothing's happening. Rian salvage. Bang! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to anyone watching. I may have just uh, scared a lot of people. Um, as it then... It explodes in space. The power cell, gone. But the creature, and what is left of it, most of it has been evaporated as you see small segments floating off into the distance, joining the rest of the debris floating through space. And all is quiet for a moment until you hear a voice. What the fuck was that? And that's where we're going to end <laughs> this week's session. <laughs> well done, everyone. Episode oh. two. And things are definitely getting interesting for the crew now. We hope you uh, all enjoyed that. Brilliantly played, guys. My players. Mwah. Wonderful. Mm. Wonderful. Chef's kiss. Um, I love that you said, oh, yeah, you've, you've managed to neutralise this thing. <laughs> like we knew that's what we were doing. <laughs> no. Well, I mean, <laughs> I had, you know, there are, there are stat blocks for certain creatures and things like that. And uh, I had two ways of attacking you. And you stuffed the coffee cup in its mouth and grabbed hold of its tail which were its that two ways yeah. of attacking <laughs> so uh, brilliantly played and it just also goes to show that in this sort of game it isn't always who's got the biggest gun it's who's it's thinking thinking your way out of certain situations um, but Dick was very brave yeah. so stressful <laughs> I think the Doc was very brave as well. Doc okay. was an absolute <laughs> MVP. Um, as was PJ this week. Um, um, yeah. PJ, you're a legend, my man, for fighting on like that. Maybe, maybe it was the the Dice Lords that thought, he's not he's not feeling very well, so let's just give him all of the good rolls this evening. Yeah, um, next week when I'm better, I'll be rolling like shit. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> the Doc will be back on his usual form. No, um... <laughs> But no, wonderfully done. The crew, it is, we're in it now, people. Things are only going to yeah. get more interesting from here. And uh, before we go, um, thank you all for watching. Um, where can people find you lovely players online, etc.? Let's start with Jim. Uh, at uh, JimBob1978 on Twitter. Lovely. Lizzie? You remembered this time. I got it written down. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, also on Twitter at Lizzie Boyle says S A Y S. Nice, Gav. Uh, also on Twitter at Bob Goblin, B O B G O B L Y double N. Hmm. Um, if if you like um, Monkey Island pins, then this is the man you want to see. Oh yeah, mine oh, arrived yeah, today. Yeah. Yeah. Peddling my wares. Oh good. Yeah. So I've got the two now. Yeah. Oh god, there's more. Than one. I've, got, more. I've got a pin board I need to fill. We need to talk in a minute, Gav. Yeah. Um, <laughs> PJ, where can they find you? Well, obviously, in a minute, you're going to be asleep. But um... Yeah, you can find me in bed. Please don't. <laughs> don't find him in bed. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Patrick. <laughs> hey, Doc. <laughs> I just wanted to say thanks for saving me. <laughs> um, on Twitter, at PJ Montgomery. Um, and every Wednesday you can find my podcast, The Measure of a Fan, where I watch Star yes. Trek with some other nerds yes. <laughs> on yeah. any any good podcast app. We have fun. Amazing. You can uh, find me on social media at Jester Diablo, um, as well as uh, the Awesome Comics Podcast. If you like comics, go forth and check that out uh, wherever you find your daily podcasts. Um, but thank you very much for watching this evening. Um, it's been so much fun and we've only just started so yeah so what is going to happen on Echo 237 what's is Zam suddenly begin, <laughs> become like the nicest guy on the ship no um, <laughs> just the immediate no <laughs> everybody hates him so you know Look, he's got no reason to be nice is Wendy going to find another coffee cup? Um, is Dr. Bill Forrest going to realise 
what just happened and how much of a boss he was over <laughs> over the past 10 minutes and how does Dick Sloan feel after quite possibly being a bit of a hero well we'll find out next time we're in the middle of space I haven't figured out an outro yet so <laughs> so I'm did, just going to yeah. say I'm just going to say no matter where you are in the world or if you're in space just stay safe people bye everyone there it is bye, bye. bye. Thank <laughs> you.